Fiona, hi. Hi, Sagar. Fiona, uh, the first time I remember I uh, got to know you was back in 2014, I believe. Uh, I was actually working on an article on Ivan Sokolo mm -hmm. and I wrote to you that can I take some pictures which you had taken and I had also mentioned that in all the pictures you look so happy <laughs> <laughs> and that's true even today. So, you know, you're so happy and uh, such a positive mm -hmm. vibe in the chess world. Uh, what's the secret of it? <laughs> I'm not sure. I would say I'm a, quite a happy person in general and the chess world um, I've been playing chess for a long time. I've been working in the chess world now for a while as well. And I always think tournaments are a lot of fun, especially now that I don't play so much. There is not the pressure of having to do well, having to prepare, you know, getting stressed. So uh, I think it's easier to be happy when you're working at an event than when you're playing. True. I mean, you, you, you are a commentator, you're a host of many events. Uh, you also play sometimes. Mm -hmm. Many, many roles. You are a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer. Uh, so I want to know more about you. Uh, can we start from the beginning? Like, uh, where were you born? In Luxembourg? Yes, I was born in Luxembourg, in the south of Luxembourg. It's quite a small country. Um, I don't come from a chess background. My father started playing chess, but he started quite late. He started when he was 40 years old. And he uh, was very passionate. He still is very passionate about chess. So he was always playing at home either by himself with a book, you know, playing uh, through games. Or sometimes he had a friend coming over to play. And I got very curious. I would often watch him. And then eventually I said, what is this game? Can you teach me? And uh, that was when I was maybe eight or nine years old. And I have a younger brother. He also started playing around that time. And then it all happened. Uh, very quickly. We were playing at home. Uh, there's a funny story actually. The first time I went to see a tournament, I had a, a friend who was playing uh, chess and my father took me to the tournament to watch her play. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, I was so used to playing at home, you know, without the pressure of people watching. And when I went to this tournament, it was such a strange feeling for me to, to see all these people and everyone could watch the game. And I remember when we went home, I said to my father, I will never play a tournament in my whole life. <laughs> and eventually some friends convinced me. And yeah, that was the beginning. And from there, it never uh, stopped. I then got onto the national team of Luxembourg quite quickly. I played but my... Luxembourg is... Uh, doesn't have a very big chess culture, does it? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. But we were very lucky. I think I was incredibly lucky that when I started playing, we had a great uh, coach of the national team, Grandmaster Vlasta Milianza from Czech Republic. So he was actually He's my... very famous, right? Very famous. He was also the coach of the player we just saw, David Navarro. I worked with him for a long time. Um, so yeah, I started working with Grandmaster Jansa when I was 11 years old until I was 18 or something, I think around then he stopped. Uh, so I learned pretty much everything I know uh, from him. And then I played a lot, of, a lot of chess until 2014, that is when I started working. Uh, actually, the Isle of Man in 2014 was my second job, uh, only in the chess world. Yeah. And then in 2015, I finished university. And after that, I started working in the chess world full time. What did you study? Events management, mm. <laughs> which has not so much to do with the chess world. And in fact, I finished my three year degree, but I never organized an event. I never <laughs> did anything with my university degree because I think chess was always uh, my passion. So when I got the, the chance to, to work in chess, I never looked back. <laughs> But when you started playing and you got better, uh, I think you won the Luxembourg title, national title several mm -hmm. times. You were also, as you said, part of the Olympiad team. Yes. You also won a gold medal yes. at the Olympiad <laughs> in 2006. That's that time you were just 16 years old. Yeah, I was 17 uh, in 2006 when I won the, the Olympiad and I, around that time, was very motivated. I became a woman international master in 2010, but then I realized I don't have what it takes to take the next step. I um, was just not disciplined enough to, to work on my chess. I always loved chess very much. I love playing. I love being at tournaments. I love 
Uh, you know, I have many ch friends in the chess world, but to put in all the hours that would be required to become a professional player, I, I understood. Um, that's, not, that's not for me, and so I was very lucky to find this other avenue. <laughs> And this other avenue which you speak about now, it's very clear, right? That chess has so many roles, yes. streaming has become quite big and so on. But back in the day, it was not so well known. Like chess commentary didn't exist in every event that you would go to as well. No. Uh, so how did this strike you and I also believe you were the first one to make some vlogs and all right for chess. Yes, the vlogs are a fond memory. Actually, I took a, a break for three years, but they are back now. I am vlogging here in the Isle of Man, so it uh, should be, I think, a two-part vlog. Hopefully, part one will come out quite soon. Um, that was a lot of fun and, yeah, the chess world, it has changed so much when I look back. Uh, when I worked here for the, in the Isle of Man for the first time in 2014, I was doing pictures, writing reports, interviews, social media, you know, there was like one person for all the, for all the jobs and now, um, now things have changed so much because so many more people are watching. As you said, when I worked here the first time in 2014, there was no live commentary um, at all. I'm not sure what exactly. I think Twitch uh, and chess streams were huge, um, made a huge impact on the chess world. Uh, but even that, you know, I started streaming on Twitch in 2016 <laughs> and there were maybe in Europe, I don't know, five or ten <laughs> streamers. Three maybe in total there were, you know, a dozen, maybe 20, no more than that. And I look around now and I think, oh my God, you know, it's really everything has changed. But it's so great for chess, I think. And uh, now there are so many opportunities, so many people are watching the events. What you guys have done with Chess Base India is incredible as well. Uh, so I think, you know, I've seen the development that Chess uh, has undergone over the last 20, 25 years. And it's very, very exciting for me, as, for me, for the Chess world. There are so many new opportunities now. So I think really it's a, a great time for Chess and I hope it will continue like this for a long but, time. But you were like the pioneer in a way. You started a few of the things. Uh, how did this come to your mind that this, these things could be done? <laughs> you know, the first time I worked on an event was by complete coincidence. Uh, it was Reykjavik Open in 2014. And I had been playing so much chess. I was supposed to play there, but I, I played too much <laughs> around that time. And I was good friends with the organizers. And I said to them, look, I would love to come. I was supposed to play, but I'm tired. <laughs> Can I maybe come and help you work? Can I take pictures? Can I write some reports, do some social media? And they said, sure. And then when I arrived there, they said, actually, do you want to do commentary? It was completely unexpected. <laughs> so my first commentary job sort of came out of, uh, out of the blue. And then later that year, this opportunity came up also at the very last moment. And I enjoyed it um, very much. And yeah, basically, <laughs> it started there. And then just more and more opportunities uh, came along. And, as I mentioned, live streams, uh, live shows started to become more normal. So uh, at some point, every big tournament started to have commentary, started to have, um, you know, social media interviews. Interviews actually are some of my favorite parts mm. um, of chess because I think it's so interesting. There is so, we have so many interesting players, so many interesting personalities in the chess world and also uh, it's nice for me to see some of the players grow, you know, I interviewed Ali Reza here and I remember the first time I interviewed him was in 2015 uh, when he was only, I think, 11 years old. So it's very nice to sort of grow with the players and see them develop. So that's a, a very nice aspect of my, my work. I think it really helps that you were a chess player and you were into chess, yes. right? Because that keeps your interest going. At some point, this work could also get kind of similar. You're doing this in many events. Yes. But being a chess player does help, right? For sure. I think it helps, of course, to understand the games, but also to understand the players, to understand how they feel, what is their mood after the game. You know, sometimes 
uh, I think for the interview it's very important to understand what are the emotions of the player, what kind of direction do you want to uh, to take the interview uh, into. So yeah, for sure it helps and I think it even helped my chess because nowadays as you mentioned, I barely uh, play but the fact that I play so little gives me more motivation to do well when I do play. So last year I actually got my highest rating ever. <laughs> yes. Which is? Uh, now it's dropped a bit again since, but 2,218, something like wow. that last year. That's amazing. <laughs> I think you play the 4NCL and all these events, right? Exactly. The 4NCL is uh, an event that's very dear to my heart. That's the, the British League. I've actually been captaining the team that I play for for almost 10 years now, I think. Uh, so yeah, the British League is one of the events I play, French League. Um, Luxembourgish league when I have the time, we have a, a league in Luxembourg. So yeah, a few events, but it's easier to find the motivation and to want to do well when you play less, <laughs> at you least for me. You, you're also uh, in Corsica, right? Is there some, like, uh, do your parents live there now? No, my, actually the connection I have to Corsica is my mother hails from Corsica. So my father is uh, Luxembourgish, but my, uh, on my grandfather's side, he's from Corsica. So we spend uh, some time in Corsica, quite a lot of time actually. And Corsica is another place where, well, I saw you there. Yes, so you saw Portisio the... in 2016. <laughs> exactly. And, and I saw that you were so relaxed there. It felt <laughs> like you were on... In because your I was not playing. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I, and actually, Portiche was very funny because we do have a, a holiday home in Portiche, so I was oh, completely wow. in shock when suddenly they announced a big international open to be held, you know, two minutes away from our house. So uh, it's nice. Corsica, for anyone watching this, if you get the chance to go to Corsica to play there, uh, they should go. For me, it's my, my favorite place it's in the like world. It's like a chess island, no? The uh, chess is in schools and so on there it's amazing it's absolutely huge they are doing chess in schools they actually have more uh, young people playing chess than football it's um, the work that they have done Leo Battesti was yes. the one who started it all it's just uh, phenomenal what they have done and what they are doing and now uh, Marc-Henri Battesti um, Marc-Henri Maurizzi, who is the world junior champion, he hails from Corsica, oh, wow. so uh, he is actually the first, he was part of that group and uh, he's the first Corsican grandmaster, he's a world champion now, so I think that's what happened, you know, when you teach uh, young people from a, a young age and you teach a lot of them, eventually someone will come up. <laughs> that's amazing. And, and for you, right now, what is your main... Uh, profession what do you uh, do what do you spend the most time in right now um I do a lot of different things at the moment and I think that's one of the, the parts that I love the most about what I do. It's always something different, you know, one day is never the same as the other. So my main focus is as a freelance uh, commentator, interviewer, so going to tournaments and working there. It's starting to rain in the oh, Isle of Man. Let's come. <laughs> yes. um, and then uh, I still stream a lot less, but I also do, for example, daily puzzle uh, explanation videos for chess.com. I recently published my first chessable course. Oh, wow. So what there's is it on? It, on the Scotch. On the Scotch, <laughs> on from the Scotch. white side. From white side, oh, yes. Wow. And there's another one coming out soon about tactics. So tactics, I think, is always a very fun uh, aspect. So. Yeah, uh, a lot of different things. The vlogs are back as well. So that's sort of where my focus is. So you don't teach chess to anyone? No. <laughs> no, no. It's one of the only things I've never really... I On my streams, I did teach some friends. We did a few lessons, but I've never uh, been a coach. I think it's important to understand where your strengths and your, your weaknesses are. I think I would enjoy working with kids sometimes, but it's just teaching is not something I have been so passionate about. So maybe in the future, but not for now. You, you know, many people have this thing that we would love to have kind of a stability, like, you know, one kind of a job, there's a salary yes. coming in and so on. Uh, th does that never impact you? Uh, or, or are you that kind of a person who likes to live on the go or how is it? I like to live on the go, but I have to say when I started doing this job was 10 years ago. We all, you know, get older now. I'm in my mid uh, 30s. When I started, I was in my mid 20s. So it was a lot um, easier, I would say, to, to live out of a suitcase. So now I try to find a balance to not be on the road 
all the time. I enjoy being at home a lot more than I did uh, 10 years ago. One thing I didn't mention is I also work for Hikaru Nakamura doing commentary on his channel when he is playing. So I'm very to have opportunities like that, like Chessable, like Chess.com to also work from home and not only earn money when I'm traveling. So I'm trying to find a balance. It's still a work in progress, but uh, I think I'm getting to the place where I want to be. Fantastic. Were you in India last year? I was in India. I played uh, the Olympia. That was How my, was your experience? It was really fantastic. I, uh, it was my first time in India. Unfortunately, my only time so far, but I hope to come back soon. I had never seen anything like this in terms of the enthusiasm and the passion that people uh, had have for chess. Our hotel, unfortunately, was quite far away. It was one hour by bus. But every day I really enjoyed, you know, this one hour on the bus to see all the people on the side of the road raving, cheering us on. I also love Indian food. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. What, what is your favorite dish? Do you remember anything? I'm a vegetarian, so I love paneer. And at our hotel, they served a different kind of paneer every day. So wow. <laughs> for two weeks, I was eating paneer twice a day. <laughs> But I was loving it. It was not uh, maybe so good for my weight or for my diet, but I was having a great time. No, but I think Indians love paneer, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we do like it a lot. And one of the things also is that you are on such great terms with almost all the players, right from, let's say, young talents, as you said, Firuja and so on, to even the players who are now veterans, also Ivan Chuk, I, I saw that he was on your stream yes. and so on. <laughs> So how do you manage to maintain this um, very nice relationships with these players who are often, you know, because of their games, they are many times in their um, their own uh, yeah, in their own mindset. It's it's not easy. Yeah, I thought, I'm not sure. I think a lot of these people. I I've always been a very sociable uh, person. So. Um, I think for me, I don't necessarily consider them as oh my God, these players are incredible. I just consider them, you know, like like people, like friends uh, in some cases, in other cases, acquaintances. And I think it's such a nice part of the chess world. Some players are very close friends of mine. Others, maybe I only see them once a year or maybe once every two years in the Olympiad. And it's always nice to catch up, even if we don't have time to to stay in touch. And, you know, I think it also helps a lot with the, with the interviews to, to have this connection with players, because I think when they feel at ease, they open up more. And so, um, yeah, I, I just I really enjoy the social aspect mm. of the chess world. And so, so when you come to a tournament, yes. you you are excited to meet your friends. For sure, yes, and I think it's such a really great part of uh, the chess world. Um, and I think we are really lucky, you know. When I look at the players at the top, really everyone uh, is so nice. They are really interesting people. So uh, it's a great job to have, and it's really really nice to that we have so many great people in the chess world. And going forward, is there something that you would like to focus on? Or are there things that you would like to do which are still on your bucket list which you haven't done? It's tough to think of something I, <laughs> I haven't done. I've, done uh, I've been very lucky you know, to do so many things. I, I think I'm very excited for the vlogs to be back because the vlogs were something I started I don't even remember. I would have to look up, but many, many years ago. And I think the vlogs are, are very nice because people at home, uh, of course, they can watch the broadcast, they can watch interviews, but sometimes they don't get a, you know, a behind the scenes. What is going on? What are the players up to when they are not playing? And um, so it's really nice to be able to share that. And uh, it's a project that I've always been very passionate about. I should give a big shout out to my editor, Anton Squared Me. Yes, I was going to ask you about him because, <laughs> yes. I mean, he makes very nice edits. Often I've seen it and you always write his name. Yes. I think he has a Twitter page. Exactly. Um, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> we never, I have never seen his face actually. I have seen his face, but only through only through video calls because he lives uh, in the U.S. I think I got to know him in 2016 when I was working for Chess24 at the time, and he was very active on uh, Twitter, making all these very funny photoshops and uh, 
I think that's when we started talking and probably that's when we started the vlogs in 2016. And so he's uh, become a great friend of mine and it's always fun to work on the vlogs together. Unfortunately, I have zero editing skills, uh, so I'm very happy and grateful for him. So you for just shoot <laughs> everything and then put it in a folder. Exactly. <laughs> we transfer and he does the magic. Wow. That's so nice. Uh, and also one more thing which you just now said that when I asked you what do you want to do uh, or what are the things mm -hmm. on your bucket list, you couldn't find something which is actually yes. a wonderful thing which means that you are very much in the present and you are enjoying yourself and I think that is yeah. something to learn from. For absolutely, maybe actually I thought of one thing, I always enjoy visiting new countries, new continents so maybe working on an event in, in Africa, I don't think I've worked an event in Africa or in Australia. I've never worked actually in, uh, in the US or in the Americas. So that would be a, a nice experience. And of course to come back to India, I yes. really want to explore more of it. Maybe during the candidates in Canada, right? Yes, like, that would be a nice <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, uh, Fiona, uh, you are such a wonderful addition or wonderful part of the chess world and you add so much value to through the things that you do. Uh, I myself, uh, when I was growing up to be a journalist, saw so much of the work that you've done. So uh, a big, big uh, congratulations to you and thank you for everything that you do. Thank you so much, Sagar, and I can only pass the compliment back to you and also thank you for all your great work. And it's always a pleasure seeing you tonight. Thank you.